Okay guys, uh, a new project. Uh, like usual, I always find neat stuff to build and st neat stuff that I always need. And um, we do a lot of family dinners around, around the house here on Wednesdays. And when you have a nice table and you bring the hot pot or food, you know, you always throw down we throw down like uh, towels and other stuff like that on top of the table to keep the pots from burning, burning the table. And I had a guy that I knew back in my Whirlpool days who passed out a square piece that had a lattice work. He did a, um, oh, what is it? Um, a relief cut this way. And then he flipped it and turned it and did a relief, yeah, that way. So it had a crisscross pattern. And I've had that since the 80s, and we use that, but we only got one. I need like six or seven of them. And I got to thinking, I got a leftover board. The board is six and one-eighth inch wide, so I cut it uh, by that length. That's small enough not to take up a lot of room and it's also one inch thick now this is cedar lumber um, you can see that side has been exposed to the sun this side hasn't um, and I come up with this idea that's a three-quarter bit in my old-fashioned style drill press and I can set the depth gauge right there with that and just go what I did on this to make it look good on both sides well I had a little see I had a little run out right there the blade come loose called chatter and that's what caused that but I'm going to take a rat tail file and kind of clean these up and sand it down and you see that's one good side um, the holes are kind of decorative I guess and I freehanded this, and it don't look bad. All I got to do, if, if if I want to really be precise, is corner to corner, draw a line, corner to corner, and then base them off that. Um, I'm going to sand this down and probably put, I got a little bit of that left. Um, give that a try on there. Uh, you see, I had to move that thing over and see all the, I don't mind cedar shavings on the floor. It really makes the shop smell good. But, uh, I'm going to make me some of these, uh, some more of these and stack them up in the house. And that way we have something to put hot pots and stuff on. And, uh, I have my saw set up. Now, I went looking the other day ago. This is that extra piece of lumber. I uh, get them off Evan Smith down at SNS Lumber in near Mansfield, Arkansas. And uh, I'll cut me, let me think, one, two, three, four more out of that, five, six over there. And that should be more than enough for the kitchen. So, uh, let me uh, let me do some more cutting, and then uh, I'll show you how I lay the the um, lines out and do stuff like that. Uh, be back on the next video soon. Okay, you can see the X's. I laid that out, marked it with a pencil. Like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. That should do. So, looks like I need to get to drilling. Boy, well, I guess that's okay. That's a nut and bolt pile. Making a mess there. This is a, it's called a rat tail file. Rasp file. This one's made from metal, 
And so you can see the wood clogging up in it. I would have to hunt for a while to find my other one. But anyhow, uh, I kind of took some of them edges off. Whatever edge is bad, I'll put, you know, can use down. But I haven't sanded these yet. Uh, I thought I had a... Oh, crud, what was it called? Wham, big round um, table crap. Oh, I can't think of the name of it. It had a sanding belt, yeah. It has a wide sanding belt, and then it has a flat sander on the side. And I was going to use that to clean up these edges, and I can't find it. Somebody else may have it by now, but anyhow... Uh, let me put that up and start drilling some holes. Quick note, I put two decking screws in to stabilize this. And that should help me out. Also, I got a old windshield scraper that I'm using to get the crud off my some of my crud off the table okay now like I said I have my stop see how it's it goes through just a little bit in fact I could lower it just a hair right there Lock it in place. And every now and then I gotta stop and relock. This is a hand tightening style, and I'll probably get a another drill with the regular chuck that I could really tighten down and and leave it in this. But uh, what I'll do. As you can see, I have lines there, and I'll uh, go off these lines and make my pattern like that. Okay, let me get to making some sawdust and get on to the next video. Yeah, look at that mess. Now you can see, uh, I, did raise, <coughs> I raised the depth of how deep this goes. But it makes a hole on this side. And all I got to do is line that up and punch through on that side. And it'll go all the way through. You can see I, I might could drop it down a little bit more. I'm try you, you don't need to tap real hard. I'm doing that to get the sawdust off. But um, that looks a little bit better pattern. Uh, I eyeballed this to put it, you know, halfway between here and here. And halfway between here and here. And that worked out pretty good. So... All I got to do is punch out that other side and work on that stack and then sand, maybe slap a little stain on there. And honestly, I could go without stain, but uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll do it anyhow. We'll just, if it brings out the grain, that's what I'm really after. But I will not use clear on this because there's going to be, that's clear, there's going to be hot stuff put on this. So clear coat is out. And the reason is, is that it'll bubble up, stick to pans and stuff like that. So yeah, it'll be nice to have a bunch more of these around. This would be a great idea for Christmas gifts is these, uh, I don't know what you call them. I know the old timers had a name for them. Uh, anti-tabletop burners <laughs> you know I don't know
pot standoffs, I mean, that's not going to mess up any tables. So let me get, uh, let me get busy. Let's see what can't, we can't come up with. Okay. Changing some things up while I'm doing this. Um, you can see I raised it up. I put an extra scrap piece right there. When I was cutting through these, like this one, I noticed when I'd flip it over, you see how the holes are kind of watered out. See how they're not round. They got almost a triangle shape to them. I could put, you know, this side up would look good, but that just ain't turning out right. So I thought punch all the way through, brung the setting all the way up to the top. I have to keep retightening tightening this because this I noticed that this was coming this is what holds that in place and he's got little plastic nuts right here I may have to put some metal ones and go up against that to make it sturdier maybe even a lock nut because these keep coming loose and I can see some gap in between there and I need that tied up against there uh, keep retightening the blade and you can see I was using this to punch through and on the this is on the back side makes a little I don't know I can trim some of that away use that rasp uh, at first it worked out pretty good some of these have been problems one thing I found, um, yeah, I went through a knot hole right there, and lordy, that thing was tough to, to drill through. Uh, but, I mean, these will do their intended job. I clean them up after this, but I got one more to cut. You can see I've been putting the uh, cedar shavings on the floor and it's all over. Let me finish up and show you some stuff on cleaning, cleaning and sanding these up. Okay, I've drilled all the holes. Uh, usually that idea of punching through will work better, but it didn't this time around. What I'm doing is getting around to sanding. This is called a mouse sander. Uh, has velcro on the bottom. I can switch out these pads real easily and and also they, they last a long time Now you notice I got a t-shirt down on my on my bench uh, Throughout the years the bench has been coated with oil and other stuff like that and that gets on the wood so I put this um, I have these old t-shirts um, T-shirts socks stuff like that I use as rags out here in the shop. So I'm sanding each side and then I get it up on the sides and I get these corners, flatten them sides out. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, excuse me, perfect, but um, I did use that rasp file where there was boogers and stuff like that on them edges. And, uh, huh. So, I got a stack to do there. So, this has got a little bit of heft to it. I, I just hope that they don't crack. That's the bad thing about cedar wood is that you get any width of a board, that sucker's cracking. But when you screw into it, like uh, my previous video, I got a good video on how to drill pilot holes and what they do and what they accomplish. That's great for hardwood like this. So, I'm going to get on to making uh, some more, or sanding some more, and getting them done. So, get you on the next video. I meant to say something. I was um, trying to get my alignment right 
on my drill press to do them holes. I may have to figure out what this thread is, if it's American or uh, metric, and put some, these are plastic uh, screws on here, and run some metal up on there, because I kept noticing this would twist. Um, that drill bit went through a lot. I got the fan on because the shop is smoky. And there's times where I'd be drilling them holes and it was just making smoke like crazy. I'll have to take a shower after this. But uh, uh, you can see, like, if you ain't making chips, you ain't working. So, anyhow, uh, it's got a replaceable bottom on it. But anyhow, I'm going to probably grab another one with a better chuck and then see about fixing that but it works for me that's what it that's what I need anyhow off to the next video okay I made a bunch of sawdust now I'm gonna go get a tack cloth I use them in auto body and you see there's a lot of dust on these if I can I mean, this thing's fairly clean, and if I wipe it, you'll see that this, there's dust coming off it. So, I gotta wipe them off, and then I'm on to, that's a light, semi-transparent, natural stain. I don't have a lot left. Um, and I'll go over them. I gotta figure out a way to st stand them up or something to let them dry so let me get that part done and get to the next video okay still got the fan on because of the smoke in the shop uh, I stained these and I put these gloves on and this was the smallest one I could find that I had in my stack I got a uh, bucket right there I keep all my paint brushes in and I was going to use these are acid brushes I keep them here by the dozens and that's just too small that just take me forever to do that them are throwaway brushes and so are these but this and you know you can see how it absorbed it and this is how I'm going to put these up here leave them for a couple days let them dry out now the stain will give it a satiny look. Uh, I didn't worry about the insides. This side will be the downside. This side will be the upside because it looks better. I drilled that hole right there. Man, black wood came out of that. I don't know if it was rotting right there or just burning through. But... Um, See the sides? It shows the grain a little better. These uh, the sides soak soak it in. The uh, end grain, and that'd be the long grain. Long grain doesn't suck it in as much. But um, you got to make sure I don't knock all these over. But they'll have to sit out here for a couple days. I kind of like seeing the knots and other stuff like that in there. I mean, it's a simple, this is simple stuff. You, you, you put this on your table, put a hot pot, pot or pan on it, and it'll keep from burning your table. Simple, easy stuff to do. You can put any design on there. I just came up with this. This is all I, you know, was thinking of. Or do it without it. To me, it kind of looks like a, a dice on its edge <laughs> kind of almost but uh but another good idea you guys could do get that stay up you can see how I took some of the edges off I mean it's rough they could be done prettier but I mean these are just tools they're going to be used a lot 
whenever you work with stains and all, get you them gloves. That way you don't get all nasty. This is going to have to sit for probably two weeks like this. That uh, fan blowing the smoke out. It, the blade, I guess, was starting to get wore out. Started to smoke in some of these holes, but anyhow, six will do me. I'll show you one more video when I get it, uh, when they're done, when they're all dried up, ready to use. Later. Okay, see how I hung these up? And I put my fan on them for day, day and a half, day and a half. And I use this saw thread to kind of support it here on, on one of my uh, modified up Harbor Freight uh, workbenches that I got. Uh, I got this in another video uh, how I made this better. I took the fiber board off it and put 2 by 4s I need to replace these handles, but um, this <clears throat> I'm going to call these good for dry, being dry. Usually, I mean, it's the middle of winter right now, and it uh, normally this would take about two weeks to dry these out. But, I mean, look at that satin color. Look how the grain sticks out. You know, these are going to get used and abused. And so, uh, I mean, the way they are is just... just like, that is a, a, rot, a rotted spot. Heck, I don't care. Flop it down like that, and who's going to know the difference? But, I mean, on this side, look at that grain. Look how the knots stick out. And uh, the end grain, I mean, these are not sharp. I mean, there's no, not getting any splinters or stuff like that. I like the knots and stuff like that. That's why I get the, the, the wood that's rejected. Because I make really nice stuff out of it. That's that hole I drug, uh, dug in that one. And a lot of dark black wood came out of that. I don't know if that was rotten or what. But that was weird. Look at the different colors of grain and stuff coming through. And all. So I got enough here to... Wow, look at that. Look like an eyeball, doesn't it? Looking back at you. I see that's that's that, that stain bring that back out and all. You know, and these are gonna get used for years and years and years. And that look at that, looks like a wing just popped in there. See how these colors and everything just pop? Now these will be around for years and years to come. I mean that's an inch thick. And it's going to take a lot of abuse and stuff. Maybe that was, yeah, that's that hole that had the, the black wood coming out of it. But anyhow, ooh, look at that, right on the edge. But this, look how the striations and everything in that. It's one inch thick. You know, this, this is, this is it. I mean, even though it's just a, a little something that you guys don't think second uh, second thought on pot holders, but look how nice this is. And I got a stack for us. I may this make this is a great idea for Christmas uh, to give your grandma or uh, the person who likes to cook. This is what you give them for for a birthday gift or Christmas. You know, um, as a gift simple come up with your own design you know or don't leave one on there i'd like to try i forgot the name of it where you stack um saw blades and you make a wide cut i'd like to try this where i make a cut skip one over cut skip one over cut and flip it over and turn it and do the same thing and make what's called a waffle cut 
That would look cool. That would look cool on this. But guys, I'm going to go put this in the kitchen. And this turned out really good. I mean, for just a, something just on the fly idea, this turned out great. You know, like I said, this is going to last for years. This will be great, great stuff here. And, yeah, they're still a little stinky, but they dried out quite a bit. That was the thing. Uh, not going to use clear because clear will stick to the pans. But these got a satiny look, and it kind of makes that grain shine a little bit. But dang, ain't that cool. Guys, go out and make you some. You're... Uh, You'll enjoy it. I mean, this is stuff that you hold on for a lifetime. You know, and that's the kind of stuff I like to make. And this is from leftover wood. And, uh, but go out and make you something you could, ha you could hang on to for the rest of your life. Y'all have a good one. We'll see you next on the next video.